What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. In this video, I want to share with you how you, in whatever career or field you're in, can shift into software engineering in 2022. And more specifically, what I think is the fastest path to get you there. So before we get started, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, my name is Travis. I'm a self-taught software developer of about five years. And basically this channel exists to document my journey and all that I'm learning along the way. If that interests you at all, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Lots of great videos planned for 2021. Now there's one more thing I want to mention in this intro. I have people every now and then asking me, hey, can you do this more technical topic or do this coding tutorial or Kubernetes tutorial, or let's build a React app, or let's build a Lambda function, something like that. I wanted to let you know, if you didn't know, that I have a pretty active blog at Travis.media. I'll put a link below or right here. But anyway, I do more of my technical coding tutorials there. And I put more of my career advice and opinions and high level overviews here on YouTube. So if you're looking for more technical tutorials, make sure you visit the blog, sign up for the newsletter, and get a weekly summary of all of my new postings. So just wanted to mention that in case you didn't know. All right, so I'm using the term software engineering because it's pretty broad. When I first started learning to code, I just wanted to get my foot in the door. I liked coding, and the, and the path that I ended on up front was like WordPress, agency work, that's what got me from my job that I hated into the software engineering world. So I'm using that term because I don't wanna to get too specific here. I wanna give you the tools you need to shift careers in 2022. It's now September. So if we take it six months, October, November, December, January, February, March, by March, you should have the skills needed and the portfolio and the GitHub repo to prove that you're a competent developer. I've always said in the past, it takes about six months to do that. And you got to put in the work to do it in that time. But if you think about it, imagine you're like 28 now, you just turned 28. By that time next year, you'll still be 28. It's a small sacrifice to make to switch careers, if that's what you want to do. So what I want to share with you today is really two paths you can take. There's the traditional path, the one I took, and then there's a new path that I would take if I was doing it over again because I think it's much faster and much more relevant in the future. So let's look at these two paths. Path number one, this is the path I took, still a really valid path to take, and that is traditional web development. Web developers are still in demand, they'll be in demand, web apps, uh, websites, all of that is a great way to go. And this path consists of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then some kind of specialty from there. I always say, since you're learning JavaScript anyway, why not go from the DOM to the virtual DOM, from JavaScript, vanilla, to something like React, a library. Now, HTML, you can learn in a week or two. You don't have to get too deep with that. You just need to know the basic structure of a website. CSS, this should take maybe three to four weeks. And be sure you don't get bogged down with stuff like CSS animations. You just need to know how to make your HTML look pretty. And finally, JavaScript's gonna take a couple months because you wanna get good at that. JavaScript is now a front end and a back end language. And it's really popular, really in demand, good to know. And from that point, you need to specialize. Again, if you're already in JavaScript, why not just go to React? But you can do something like PHP, or you can get into WordPress development, things like that. It's many paths you can take, but that's pretty much the traditional web development path. And if you go that route, you build up the portfolio items and you'll have something to show at the end of six months. Now I have a learn to code blueprint that you can follow if you wanna go this route. I'll put some links below to it, but it basically lines up how long it takes for each one, what courses you need to take, what projects you should build all the way through to your interviews and trying to land that job. So I'll be sure to put some links below but this is still a valid path. Now, the reason why I wouldn't take this path if I was doing it over again is because a lot of people have taken it. Like when I started coding, boot camps were the big thing and all boot camps were teaching web development. And since then, so many thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there have learned to code and shifted careers and they did so in the web development route. So it's kind of a saturated industry. Again, you can still get in, but for me, I like to look a little bit ahead of that, like what's the next trend that will get me into software engineering? So I've been thinking about it and there's really only two technologies 
needed for this path. And this is the path I think is the fastest route in. And there's two technologies. Get AWS certified and become really good at Python. That's what I would do if I could do it over. So let's start with the AWS certification. Cloud computing is like the norm now. Everybody's in the cloud. Everybody's looking for cloud administrators and developers and architect. It's a huge industry. And also AWS gives you valid certifications. Like if you want to become a React developer, that's great, but there's really no certification. You got to have all these projects to prove that you can develop. You got to pass the coding exam, all of that. You still got to prove your worth with AWS, but that certification means a lot. AWS doesn't make it easy for you to get certified. So if you were to go this route, the first thing I would do, and just a side note, I did get AWS certified early this year. I passed the uh, Solutions Architect Associate certification. And I did a video on the exact steps I took, the exact courses and practice tests that prepared me to pass it on my first go. So I'm going to put that also below or put a link up here if you want to check that out. So essentially you need to get two AWS certifications. You need to get one, the Solutions Architect Associate certification, and then two, the Developer Associate. Now, the reason for the AWS Developer Associate is to give you that developer edge. It also gives you a little bit of a DevOps edge. And that's what I meant by what's in the future. DevOps is the new big thing. It is very, very much in demand. DevOps and site reliability engineers are in high demand and they're being paid really well and they will stay in demand in the coming years. So being able to navigate AWS as an administrator and then getting that developers opens up the whole pipelines, um, infrastructure as code, all of that part of AWS. So that's number one, get those two certifications. Now, while you're learning AWS, so you'll need to open an account, you'll need to take the Udemy courses. While you're learning that stuff, simultaneously be learning Python. Now, the tricky part about the traditional path is you've got a lot to learn. You got HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe you'll learn PHP, and then you get excited and you start jumping to other languages and people start saying, hey, check this language out. Ooh, this language is good. And you get way off course with all of that candy. Well, this path, you just have Python. So while you're learning AWS and you're working through your certifications, you're also learning Python. Not Django, not Flask. We're not doing Python web development. You're gonna learn core Python, First, then you're gonna start scripting, you're gonna start interacting with APIs and working with files and file systems. Then you wanna start writing Lambda functions, creating EC2 instances and IAM roles with Bodo3, which is AWS's SDK. So you're learning AWS, you're getting certified, you're learning Python really well and how it works with AWS, and you're building up this resume of this cloud engineer cloud developer, cloud administrator that can script with Python and can do all things AWS. Now, why Python? Why not Golang, which I love, or JavaScript or something like that? Well, Python is number one in the cloud. So many companies are using it because it's easy and it has solutions for like everything you can imagine. I personally work in AWS every day and with Python in automating all the things. It's been over a year since I've done any HTML, any CSS, JavaScript, I still do every now and then. But this path right now is huge. There's lots of opportunity and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. And that's the path I would take today. That's the fastest route. Python, AWS, that's all you need. Certifications to say, hey, I know AWS. And Python skills to back up all of the development within it. Now you might be like, man, that sounds kind of boring. I want to build apps. That's fine. You can go the traditional web development route or you can go this route and then after you get in, you can start to work your way toward becoming a web developer. You can do it any way you want. Both of those routes are fine. I just think the second route is faster. And in my opinion, it's more enjoyable. I've done them both. I love DevOps in cloud computing and that kind of thing. Now, if you need some recommendations in learning Python and becoming a ninja in scripting and all of this cool stuff, I'm gonna put a link below to what I think is the number one, my most favorite Udemy course of 2021 and it's in Python. I'll put a link to that below. You could work through that while you're getting AWS certified and I think it would be sufficient. Six months later, you start applying for jobs. Hey, here's my certifications. Here's some things I built. Here's some CloudFormation templates, some Lambda functions, some SAM templates, all, all of these things you would pick up in this six months going the second route. So the last thing I wanna say here is basically just a word of encouragement. If you wanna shift careers from whatever you're doing into software engineering, it's completely doable in 2022. Took me about six months. 
I've seen countless people do it in six months. You just have to lay out a path and be persistent and focused from start to finish and be confident in your skills and the things that you're learning and that people are looking to hire you because people are looking right and left for developers these days. So let's discuss below. Are you looking to change careers in 2022? Let me know below. Let me know your plans. If I can answer any questions for you, I'll be happy to. If you like this video, consider hitting that thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.